Hey guys, it's Troy here, and uh, I'm just going to do a fairly quick video on recent pen mail. I've got three new pens to introduce you to, because a uh, couple of them you might actually want to uh, throw into your collection. And I also have a, a shipment that just arrived today of some more pens I'll tell you about, alright? So, um, things around here have been kept really, really busy between work and Barney the Beagle. I uh, now have a chance to throw up a few uh, pictures since I'm actually going to do some production. But uh, Barney was um, our dog that we adopted here within the last uh, well, four to six weeks or so. And, uh, you know, old slime dog we had, we had to have put down. And so we decided to get another companion for our dog, Brady. So, here are some pictures of Barney the Beagle. Um, and... Uh, you know, he's, he's, it's been a, a challenge and also a joy uh, with this dog so far. So that's the latest from around here. So let's go ahead and get to the pens. We've got two Chinese pens here on my desk and one American right here in the middle. Um, I wanted to show you these because I figured these are some that, first I wanted to, I wanted to get them because I've uh, heard about them, I've seen reviews, and yes, I haven't been extremely active uh, doing reviews here lately. I'm trying to work on changing that, but life has been busy. I mean, heck, just last night our clothes washer died and I had to run out and get a new clothes washer. So uh, the unexpected stuff in life just keeps on happening here in our household. Let's start with this one. This is a Jin Hao number 82. And, uh, you know, I've got a Jin Hao 80 that I picked up a little while ago that was actually one of the better Jin Hao's I've ever used in my life. And this particular one, the 82, a little on the small side. And when I look at that, I'm thinking Sailor Pro Gear. I think that's what they were trying to go for is modeling this after the Sailor Pro Gear. Um, and I'll be honest with you, it writes just as well as any Sailor uh, that I've had. Um, as much as I want to love Sailor pens, I personally am not a Sailor fan. I will say that uh, based upon every Sailor that I've ever really tried. I um, haven't been a tremendous fan of, of Sailor. Here is a Jin Hao, another Jin Hao, Chinese made, X159. Now, for those of you familiar with the 159, I mean, I've had a 159 for years. And this is what the regular 159 looks like. Uh, this pen is probably five or six years old. It's all metal. You can tell that the clip is different. The clip, uh, the, I mean, the cap band is a little bit different, but the style is essentially the same. And what were they trying to model that after? Well, the Mont Blanc 149. Now, they came a little closer to the 149 concept with the X159 in several regards. Uh, you know, not necessarily on the cap band, but the clip and the styling and the fact that this is now made out of a plastic or a resin. A precious resin, if you will, for those who are uh, familiar with Mont Blanc and what they call their stuff. So this one here, the uh, regular 159, I don't have the Jin Hao nib in it. I actually have um, a Franklin Kristoff nib that I installed in there uh, just for fun because I could. Now taking a look at the Mont Blanc, that's a number six nib that was on those. Well, you can tell that Mont Blanc has the, the larger nib. Well, what is neat about the X159, they've also gone to a larger nib, something larger than a number six nib. So looking at the nib comparison right there between the 149 by Mont Blanc and the X159 on the left from Jin Hao. So, I'm definitely going to cap that. This particular pen, the 149, is not inked up, so I don't worry about that so much. Uh, but I do have this inked up with a Waterman um, Mysterious Blue. Conklin. I picked this up here just recently uh, because, number one, I like vintage Conklins. I have a, a an old vintage Conklin Endora here in my collection that I really need to get fixed because the, you know the lever box kind of came right out, uh, but I need to have that uh, that repaired. Uh, I like the way it wrote this particular one, much smaller than the other one. The other one's an oversized, but a, kind of a dinky, almost pocket pen size. But that lapis color, absolutely beautiful. 
little red stripes on it. You get that typical Conklin style clip that you see uh, from the olden days, 1920s, this particular pen came out. And you open that up, and yeah, I got a little blue ink on that nib. Uh, but this is a firm, very firm nib, and it writes extremely well. I've been very happy with how that little Conklin writes. You'd think that it'd be a little small uh, for me and my great big old mitts, but when you do post it, it actually does fairly well when it's posted. And uh, I've had some really good writing sessions with this particular pen. It's a, it's a fine nib and it writes on a very fine line. And I was actually kind of surprised at how firm and how fine that line was. Yet at the same time, very surprised at how well it wrote. And yes, I inked myself just a little bit because I think that um, I need to clean up that ink just a little bit. All right, here are some pens that I've actually had some good success with. I just went to Wish.com and I looked up fountain pens. And there's no particular brand name given with these, but be honest with you, I've had really good success picking them up. And how have I been using them? For giveaway pens. It's a little piston filler, and they're like a buck or a couple dollars a piece, um, and they want a couple of dollars for shipping, but they've got this new thing now that if you order uh, $10 worth, uh, then they will give you some uh, a flat rate shipping. So I ordered like 10 or 11 of these pens uh, to keep me well stocked. These pens here, I've given away all the ones I had. They come in either fine or extra fine, so I chose the fine nibs because I thought they wrote better than the extra fine. It is a piston filler. They come in various colors. But this particular pen right here is actually done fairly well with a really good ink capacity. They write well for what they are, and I went ahead and have given away all the ones that I had previously purchased, and people have been happy with them. So um, I think that uh, these ones, as, as inexpensive as they are, uh, I'm pretty sure that um, I'm going to get some good giveaway use out of these. I don't know as though I'm going to keep any of them, but they come in various colors. You can see that you know the, the blue, the, the rose colored, the green, the white, black, um, a darker blue, purplish color. Um, so and then, and then one was clear in there. So I just ordered a variety of colors uh, for giveaway. So been really, really happy. Let's go ahead and give a quick writing sample uh, with these Jin Hao's and with that Conklin, just so you can see. This particular one right here, the Jin Hao 82. The Jin Hao 82. I put into it some Robert Oster Fire Engine Red. I mean, it does fairly well for what it is. And like I said, it writes every bit as well as any expensive uh, pen that I have gotten from Sailor. Matter of fact, if you ask me, even better than some of the Sailor pens that I've got. I'm not a big fan of that particular Japanese brand. It's just I don't like... Uh, people rave about their nibs. Me, not so much. I I'm, I'm not a, haven't been a huge fan of um, the 1911. Um, the 1911L, I like the size of it. It didn't write quite as well as I had hoped it would. Um, uh, I borrowed a King of Pens. That did okay. That was probably the better out of the, the bunch that I've got. Uh, Sailor Prophet, which is essentially another 1911. Not real much of a fan. But let's go ahead and look at this one right here. This particular Jin Hao, I went ahead and inked it up with some Pelican Edelstein Onyx. So this is a black ink here. Now, this one here... And now you saw that skip right here. That's been typical of this pen so far since I inked it up. This is the X159. This pen is written a little dry. And quite honestly, been getting a lot of skips. I've tried working on this nib just a little bit to try to increase the ink flow. But it just, for me, hasn't kept up well. So what I'm going to try to do here is uh, I'm going to try to be fair with it. I'm going to probably flush it out real well, probably tear out the nib um, in the feed, flush it all out really, really well, put it back together, and maybe even try a different ink 
just to see if I can get any better performance out of it. But as it sits right now, I've had this pen, uh, let's see, I got it just this week. So the beginning part of this week, maybe Monday. So I've had it four or five days and uh, I've been keep, I, I, I keep trying to use it. I keep trying to write with it. And quite honestly, that little X159 right there, uh, I just haven't been tremendously uh, a big fan of how it writes. Uh, so that's my big beef with that one. Now this little Conklin here, let's go ahead and do that. So Endura, 1920s, and uh, like I said, I put in some Waterman. It's a nice wet writer. Conklin uh, with some Waterman Mysterious Blue. Nice, smooth, wet, juicy writer. Stiff nib. You're not going to get any um, flex out of it. I didn't expect to, but just a really good, wet, old-fashioned writer. And it, it does kind of gush a little bit. You can see I keep getting more and more um, ink off from that. Um, and yeah, occasionally I get inked up a little bit, but I've been very, very happy with how that's worked. So there you go. There is my pen mail for today. And I'll try to get some more videos in. So maybe a full review of that 82, that X159, and a few others that I've got on my list to do. So, but that's all there is uh, that's fit to print from around here. Just sharing you a quick pen mail video to show you and give you some ideas for your own collection.